So you want to play the restoration druid. That's a very unique choice and you're in luck. This video will teach you every single nuance and aspect you need to know to succeed and be the best possible restor druid you can be. Hey guys, this is about Matthew and I also by Madrid. And this video will be a comprehensive go-to guide for anyone wanting to refresh or learn knowledge on the restor druid as I will be breaking down literally everything i'm making this guide where months to years in the future anyone can come back and get a complete overview of this class so i've made sure to make it as general as possible so it can be relevant for a very long time so if you guys like my voice my face whatever it may be consider subscribing it does help me immensely and hit that bell icon so you know when i upload let's get into it this healer is arguably one of the most complicated classes in World of Warcraft as you're playing multiple classes at the same time through the Druid shapeshift forms. This is the main quirk of the classes. You're able to enter different transformations that will give you unique playstyles and movesets. The rest of Druid stands out compared to every other healer because majority of your heals are hot, known as healing over time effects. Insta cast abilities that every few seconds will tick for healing. This healer is very flexible when it comes to its playstyles. You have the ability to have a high melee damage through cat form ultra defense with bear form while having your teammates being healed simultaneously so many options and ways to tailor your playstyle based on the circumstances so in the druid's regular form known as the humanoid form you have ranged damage spells moonfire and sunfire are insta cast dots known as damage over time spells that will take for damage every few seconds sunfire is also an aoe ability wrath is your casted range ability when you're in your humanoid form you want to keep moonfire and sunfire on the targets at all time and then spam wrath if you're looking to do damage you can take a talent called balance affinity which will allow you to become a stronger caster and gain the moon can form and more spells and increase the range of all your spells by five yards the moon can form will increase your armor by 125 percent and grants you immunity from polymorph effects like mage polymorph pouting repentance etc so that immunity is also with all of your animal transformations so you counter a lot of classes as the druid star surge is one of these new abilities you get it's a huge casted spell that will launch a giant purple bolt doing a good amount of damage on a 10 second cooldown starfire has two charges and is like wrath but the moon version of it and typhoon is a knockback ability that will push anyone in front of you back dazing them for six seconds on a 30 second cooldown amazing for people to getting people off of you a unique quirk of the boomkin is eclipse by hitting an enemy with wrath you get a proc called eclipse lunar this reduces the cast time of starfire by eight percent and increases the damage of starfire by 20 percent for 15 seconds and starfire does the same after you use two casts of it but it gives you a buff called eclipse solar which will buff of wrath you want to keep moonfire and sunfire on the target and cycle between wrath buffing starfire and starfire buffing wrath to give you the highest amount of damage so you want to cycle between these procs that are buffing these individual abilities so you can maximize your damage overall in the druid's cat form your movement speed is increased by 30 percent auto attack damage increased by 40 percent and you have immunity to polymorph effects and reduced falling damage so you can jump off cliffs and you're probably gonna survive very realistic similar to like catch in the real world all your damage abilities are close range and your abilities will cost energy your yellow resource and some of your abilities will give you combo points up to five which you can use to use more powerful abilities in your talent tree you can take an ability called feral affinity which increases the cat movement speed by 15 percent so you're speedy in this form and your energy regeneration by 35 percent and give you a lot more cat abilities first you have prowl this allows you to enter stealth on a six second cooldown where no enemy can see you unless they're nearby you rake which is one of your damage abilities and your bleeds deals damage to the enemy and make them bleed for extra damage over 15 seconds if you are if you are in stealth when you use rake it will also stun the target for four seconds and deal 60 percent extra damage this ability generates one combo point Shred, another damage ability, causes damage and does more to targets of bleeds. And while in stealth, it does 60% more damage and has double the chance to crit in stealth. It also generates one common point every time you use it. Swipe is an AoE ability that will do physical damage to all targets around the cat, generating one common point as well. Those three abilities will generate you your common point and you're going to have to be using them. 
As a wrestler drew with Pharaoh Fendi, you have three abilities that cost comp points, up to a maximum of five. Every extra comp point you spend on these abilities will make them a lot more powerful. Rip costs one to five comp points and causes your target to bleed for a certain amount of over time and the damage goes up with each comp point you spend on it so use one comp point it's going to do a certain amount of damage two it's going to do a little bit more etc etc and it's one of your most powerful abilities ferocious bite the significant amount of damage depending on how much comp points you use and you spend with it and maim will stun the target for a certain amount of time and each comp point you 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 more you use the stun will be longer and longer while using cap form as a wrestler druid your main objective is going to be to get in and get out doing damage but also generating comp points to then use your cc abilities such as maim first you want to stay in stealth and then use rake which will stun the target and put the initial bleed on them then just spam 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 shred if the target is single target and if it's aoe you swipe as this will give you comp points which then you will use rip for a bleed ferocious bite for instant damage or maim for a stun overall this is a very simple rotation but the cat is a lot weaker than your other forms so you have to make sure to run and create space yourself or you will get punished immensely bear form's main use is to increase the defenses of the resto druid it increases your armor by 220% and your stamina by 25% and grants immunity to polymorph effects. So this is like your tanky form. For your abilities in bear form, you use rage, which is generated by taking damage and dealing damage. The baseline bear form abilities you have are growl, an eight second cooldown that makes a target focus their attack on you. This only works on, com on computer type mobs. It doesn't work on actual players. Mango is a DPS ability that generates 10 rage, and you're gonna be doing a significant amount of damage with this ability. Swipe is an AOE ability similar to the cat form that you can spam and will do a lot of AOE damage. And then you have iron for which is one of your major defenses that cost four rage and will increase your armor by a certain percentage for seven seconds, which will reduce the physical damage you take so it's pretty good when you take the guardian infinity talent it reduces the damage you take overall by six percent and gives you the thrash aoe ability that will set bleeds on targets around you and encapsulating roar is a crowd control that will disorient all enemies within three yards for three seconds on a 30 second cooldown this is very good for chaining your ccs or getting space and then your most powerful Bear defensive is frenzied regeneration. This will cost 10 rage and will heal you for 32% of your health over three seconds. Very, very, very powerful. The Jude forms are the most complicated aspect of the class as being able to switch back and forth depending on the situation is essential in becoming very good with the rest of Druid. Bear form is a very good way to survive, so switching into early will prevent a lot of damage going on you. Majority of the Druid's healing abilities are hot, known as healing over time, meaning that you're gonna wanna preemptively keep heals on a target so they are healed while taking damage. First, you have regrowth, one of your baseline casted heals that will also apply a hot. And if you regrowth a target that has the regrowth hot already on them, the crit is increased by 40%, super powerful. Wild growth is also a cast heal on a 10 second cooldown. They'll apply a hot to six targets in a 30 yard range. A very effective AOE that's gonna heal a lot of people. Rejuvenation is an instant cast heal that will heal a target for a certain amount over 17 seconds. This is something you're always gonna wanna keep on your teammates at all times to just heal them while they're taking damage. Life Bloom is another hot that will heal the target for a certain amount over 15 seconds. And when Life Bloom is dispelled, it will heal the target instantly for a certain amount. This can only be put on one target at a time. All these heals combined on a singular target or multiple targets is how you're gonna get that a bunch, bunch of healing just ticking over time. Swiftman is a unique spell that consumes regrowth, wild growth, or rejuvenation from an ally to instantly heal them for a huge amount and what you'll be using to save people out of dire situations. And your big AoE heal, Efflorescence, this will put down a circle of a flower in the middle on the ground and when you stand in it, when anyone stands in it, three allies will get healed over time. For your major cooldowns, Bar Skin makes your skin tough, reducing damage you take by 20% for 12 seconds. It is usable while you're stunned, frozen, and cast baited, feared, or asleep on a one minute cooldown. 
use this early to prevent a good amount of damage versus using it late so if you're taking damage you're at 80 percent use bar skin versus using bar skin at 10 percent it's gonna be that much more effective Innervate is a three minute cooldown that allows you to make someone's abilities cost zero mana for 10 seconds or yourself when you cast this on someone else you get 50 percent of the effect so when you're low on mana use this it's gonna help you immensely or when your teammates low on mana iron bark is a 1.5 minute cooldown that makes an ally take 20 percent reduced damage increases the healing from your overtime effects by 20 percent for 12 seconds this is one of your most powerful cooldowns that in the right situation will save your teammate all your heals are going to get buffed by 20 percent and the ally is going to take 20 20 percent reduced damage you or whoever you put it on nature swiftness makes your next regrowth rebirth or entangling roots insta cast and castable in all forms and the heal is increased by 100 percent when you do swift men and then nature swiftness regrowth you're literally going to bring a uh, teammate back to full health it's super powerful tranquility is your big aoe cooldown that heals allies within 40 yards for a certain percentage over 6.9 seconds and each time it heals it will put a hot on a target that will heal for over eight seconds this will stack over time and the heals increase by 100% outside of raids. The Wrestle Druid's first passive is Yersa's Gift, which will heal you for 3% of your health every 5 seconds. If you have full health, this will heal an ally instead. So every 30 seconds, it's going to be 18% health healed. Over time, this is going to do a cool, stupid amount of healing. Omen of Clarity will give Life Bloom heals a 4% chance to make your next regrowth instacast. So, like, you'll get this proc, like, every so often and you're gonna just get extra healing from it mastery harmony increases your healing by the percentage of your mastery so if you have 10 percent mastery you're gonna be healing for 10 percent more and every healing effect you have will stack that percentage so if you have five healing effects that's gonna be 50 percent increased healing when this all stacks and multiplies it does a tremendous amount of healing for your utility abilities you have trial form which is a shape shift which will allow you to move faster in instance areas on land you're going to be moving at 40 percent speed in the open world you're going to be moving at 100 percent speed on land and you also you can also fly around and in water your swoon speed is increased by 100 percent because you literally become a dolphin nature's cure will remove all harmful magic poison and curse effects off of a target on an eight second cooldown this is essential to use as a healer so when your teammates or yourself have these negative effects make sure to remove them Urshul's Vortex will drop a spinning circle at a location that will reduce the movement speed of anyone who is inside of it by 50%. And if they try to leave once, it will pull them back. Dash is your sprint type ability that will put you in cat form, increasing your movement speed by 60% for 10 seconds. This is useful for, of course, running away from someone or chasing an enemy. Stampeding Roar will shift you into bear form, increasing the, your smoothing speed of everyone around you by 60% for 8 seconds. As you can tell, the Druid has a lot of mobility. You have trial form, you have your double sprints, and you, your forms are just faster overall. So you can run away from every class in the game if you know how to do it effectively. Soothe will remove enrage effects off of a target. This would only apply to specific situations like a warrior when they use Berserker Rage or like when they get an enrage proc or when you're facing a Beastmaster Hunter and they like Beast or Wrath and enrage their pet. So it depends, but this is very useful in some situations. All the Druid's forms remove roots and slows when you shapeshift. That is very important to remember when you're running away from enemies. Yes, you already have super speed and a lot of mobility, but you can also just remove all slows and all roots in the game so you can never really be stopped for cc's also known as crowd control the druid has options for every class in the game first you have cyclone hands down the most powerful crowd control in the game this will disorient one enemy for six seconds and make them invulnerable to healing and damage so for example you're facing a target that's at five percent health and is about to just say bye bye but they have a healer that is trying to heal them if you cyclone that person that's about to die they cannot be healed anymore so you can use cyclone in certain situations entangling roots is a casted spell that will hold a target in place for 30 seconds in pve and eight seconds in pvp damage does break this effect hibernate will force beasts and dragons to sleep for 40 seconds in pve and eight seconds in pvp this does work on other drew forms so if you see another druid in cat form bear form moon can form you can hibernate them and so you even counter yourself, which is hilarious. 
CC is very important in PvP, and a major factor of that is diminishing returns. This affects all types of CC in PvP. So I will link a guide down below in the description that will talk about this topic. And if you don't know this, once you learn this, it will elevate your game immensely. So check it out. Like I've said in every complete beginner guide, knowing each talent how they work is essential so you can apply them in different situations. So I'll be breaking down every single one and talking about well, where I would use it. For the level 15 tier, you have abundance. For each rejuvenation you have on a target, it reduces regrowth mana cost by 6%, and the critical strike chance is increased by 6%. If you're using rejuvenation a lot, this is pretty good. For the level 15 tier, you have abundance. For each rejuvenation you have on a target, it reduces regrowth mana cost by 6%, and the critical strike chance is increased by 6%. If you're using rejuvenation a lot, this is pretty good. Nurse gives the Druid a cast ability that receives a triple bonus from Mastery Harmony. So if your Mastery increases your healing by 10%, Nurse will triple it, so meaning 30% increased healing, leading to a humongous casted heal. If you're stacking the Mastery stat, then you do, you, if you run this, you're gonna be healing for a good, good amount. Scenarian War protects the target for 30 seconds and any damage will trigger a massive heal over time on that target. This is really a good ability to stack with your other hots. For the level 25 tier, you have Tiger's Dash, which replaces Dash and will increase your movement speed in Catherine by 200%, reducing over the 5 seconds, so it will slowly decrease over 5 seconds. The speed you get on this is also ridiculous, so you're going to be like bolting across wherever you are. So if you need that type of speed, take it. Renewal will instantly heal you for 30% of your maximum health and is useful in all types of forms on a 1.5 minute cooldown. If you need an extra big heal on yourself, then run this. Wild Charge will grant you an ability depending on your shapeshift form. So in human form, you will be able to pull yourself to an allies location. In bear form, you're able to charge the enemy, rooting them for four seconds. In cat form, you're able to leap behind an enemy, dazing them for three seconds. Trial form will allow you to leap forward 20 yards. You can also use the trial form leap to survive massive falls. In aquatic form, your swim speed will be increased by 150% for five seconds seconds for the level 30 tier i broke down how each talent works earlier in the video so check out the time stamps for a full detailed explanation but balance affinity will give you boom conform in your spells making you a caster feral affinity will empower your cat for making you a semi dps class and garden affinity will give you so much defense you're going to be a semi tank with bear form for level 35 tier, you have Mighty Bash. So it will give you a 4 second stun on a 1 minute cooldown. If you need more stuns in your life, then run this. Mass Entanglement will root all enemies within 15 yards for 30 seconds in PvE and 8 seconds in PvP on a 30 second cooldown. If you're facing a lot of melee or find yourself kiting, this may be something you want to run. Heart of the Wild is a 5 minute cooldown that buffs the affinity you have chosen for 45 seconds. For Guardian, affinity stamina is increased by 20% and Iron Fur can now stack, meaning that you can stack a bunch of armor up on you, reducing physical damage you take. And now you get 2 charges of Frenzied Regeneration. That itself is just stupid powerful. You literally as a bear be able to heal yourself so much. For Feral Affinity, your damage is increased by 30% and your critical strikes with common point generated abilities. When you critical strike with common point generated abilities like Rake, Shred, Swipe, you're going to get an extra common point. For Balance Affinity, damage is increased by 30% and Star Surge is now Instacast. Nice, nice, nice. For the level 40 tier, you have Soul of the Force. This Swift Man increases the healing of your next regrowth or regeneration by 200% or your next Wild Growth by 75%. This combined with nature swiftness gives you a heal that will heal someone from zero to like 100%. It's super, super powerful. And that's how you that's how you get that big combo type heal if you do run this. Cultivation makes it so when rejuvenation heals, the target blows 60% and applies cultivation to the target, healing them over six seconds. If you want more hots, then this is the talent for you. Incarnation Tree of Life allows you to transform into the Tree of Life on a 3 minute cooldown, increasing healing done by 15% and your armor is increased by 120%, granting you immunity to polymorph effects for 30 seconds. This form will empower rejuvenation, healing by 50% and reduce its mana cost by 30% and makes regrowth and tangling roots, instacast and wild growth will hit more targets. Essentially, this is a Russell Druid Super Saiyan form where the heals become intense. 
for low 45 tier inner peace will reduce the cooldown tranquility by 60 seconds on a from so from a three minute cooldown to a two minute cooldown while using tranquility damage taken is reduced by 20 percent and you gain immunity to knockbacks if you want a super decked out tranquility that is just super buffed then run this spring blossoms is a passive that empowers efflorescence making it heal for more this is good if you need more aoe healing and overgrowth is the ability that applies life bloom rejuvenation wild growth and regrowth heals over time on a target on a one minute cooldown very convenient spell where you can just instantly put all your hots on one target and you don't have to like put them all out individually for low 50 tier photosynthesis will make life bloom heal 20 percent faster and life bloom has a four percent chance to bloom and heal for more you want stronger life blooms, then this is a good choice for you. Germination allows you to put rejuvenation on a target twice, increasing its duration by two seconds. This is very powerful when stacking all your hots together. You're gonna have like five different heals you at the same time, and this does affect your mastery. So more hots mean more healing overall. Flourish extends the duration of all your hots by eight seconds and speeds the rate they tick by 100% for eight seconds on a 1.5 minute cooldown. If you want extra burst in your healing, then take this. Down below, I will link PVE and PvP guides to talents so you can that you can run depending on what type of game modes you are playing. All these update, all these like guides I will be linking down below will update as the game updates, so you can always come back to this video and you'll have an updated guide. Same with the honor talents, knowing how each one works will enable you to adjust according to who you're facing, which is a major advantage in PvP. This tanglement is a passive that makes efflorescence remove all slows or off allies that it heals. So if you're getting slowed off, then you could potentially run this. Reactive resin is a passive that makes rejuvenation on a target give them two stacks of reactive resin. When they're hit by a melee crit, they are healed for a very good amount. And the duration of rejuvenation is extended by 2.6 seconds. This is very powerful against melee DPS. Entangling Bark is a passive that makes Iron Bark grant nature's grass to whoever you put it on. The first two melee attackers are rooted for 8 seconds. So, if you're having trouble with melee DPS, you can run this potentially to root them and give yourself space. Thorns puts a buff on a target, and when that target takes damage, the attacker takes nature damage back, hence the name Thorns. Imagine you were punching a bunch of Thorns, you're going to be taking damage right back. And their movement speed is slowed by 50%. This only works if the Druid is within 15 yards of the Thorns buff, but this is very very good at punishing melee DPS that are doing damage to you because they'll be taking damage back. Deep Roots is a passive that increases the amount of damage required to break any of your Druid Roots. So this will be Entangling Roots and Mass Entanglement. And for whatever reason, the Druid has a lot of abilities to counter melee DPS. And this talent is amazing for that. High Winds is a passive that makes Cyclone reduce the damage and healing of a target by 30% for 4 seconds after Cyclone ends. If you're cycloning a lot, you'll get a major benefit from this as over time this will reduce the, the enemy's power. Early Spring makes Wild Growth Instacast, and when you heal 6 allies, you get a buff called Full Bloom on a 30 second cooldown. Full Bloom makes Wild Growth apply Life Bloom to all targets healed, and this buff will last for 30 seconds. This will make Life Bloom an AoE ability, and Life Bloom is already super strong, so this is actually pretty powerful. Mark of the Wild buffs allies, causing all nature, fire, frost, and arcane damage over time effects and AoE. Are reduced by 15 percent so if you're facing a class with any of this type of damage that are doing in the form of dots or aoe run this as it will severely nerf them keeper of the grove gives the resto druid invincibility for 6.9 seconds while using tranquility this is broken and can save you in any situation as long as you can get it off because nothing can really stop it Focus Growth allows Life Bloom to stack three times on one target. Each stack reduces the mana cost by 8% and increases the healing by 8%. So this will make your Life Bloom 24% stronger. A pretty good trade. Master Shapeshifter empowers whatever affinity you have talented. So for Guardian, your chance to be crit in bear form is reduced by 10%. For This is just really good for defense. For Bounce, entering Moonkin form reduces the Chasm of Wrath and Starfire by 30%. The damage is increased by those abilities by 20 for 10 seconds. That's actually pretty, pretty powerful. And for Pharaoh, your bleed damage is increased by just a flat 30%. And this is immense because you you have if you have feral Vindy in this you're pretty much a dps class at that point 
in the description i will also link an ever updating honor talent guide so you can know what you can specifically run depending on the situation the druid's healing rotation is pretty simple the main premise is to keep your healing over time effects on a target when they're taking damage around that 70 to 100 percent health mark make sure all your hots talents included are on the target that's going to be rejuvenation regrowth life bloom wild growth and if you have talented scenarian ward and also germination for like that double rejuvenation if you do run that when your ally starts dipping into the 40 to 70 percent health pool mark use swiftman for a big insta cast heal but to use swiftman you have to make sure you have rejuvenation wild growth or regrowth on that target to get that big heal you also want to use cooldowns like Iron Bark, which will empower your healing on the, a target and will give them a damage mitigation as well. And weave in regrowth because every if you already have regrowth on the target, every regrowth after that will have increased crit, which is going to allow it to just heal for a way more amount. Around that 4% and below mark, that's where you're going to want to use Swiftman and Nature Swiftness regrowth in combination. Nature Swiftness will buff the healing of regrowth by a good amount. And if you're running Soul of the Forest, you you use Swiftman. Swiftman will, Soul of the Forest will make regrowth healing increase by 200%. And there's Nature Swiftness will add the extra 100%. So you're going to be able to shoot a big Instacast regrowth that's going to be doing 300% increased healing. That will literally bring your teammate back to full health. So super powerful. For your AoE healing, use Wild Growth and Efflorescence to maximize it on all targets. And while that's happening, spread your other hots on all the rest of the teammates. The most annoying part about the Druid is applying your hots to multiple targets. So make sure you pick the teammates that are highest priority or taking the most amount of damage. For the rest of the stat priority, Critical Strike gives heals a higher chance to crit, which will just double the healing done. I only see this being useful with big single target heals like Swiftman or Nature Swiftness and Regrowth. But you already have built in higher crit through Regrowth, so I don't know if this is super necessary in running. Haste makes all your Druid healing over time effects heal faster, resulting in more healing overall, and is the main stat most Druids run in PvP. Mastery also busts the healing of the Drew by a certain percentage depending on how much you have and will stack for each healing over time you have on the target. So, like I said, for example, if you have 10% mastery, that's 10% increased healing and every hot on a target will stack that percentage over and over again, resulting in crazy healings. Versatility is a PvP stat that increases the damage and healing by the percentage you have. It reduces the damage you take by half that percentage. So if you have 20% verse, your healing and damage is going to be up by 20%, and you're going to be taking 10% reduced damage. For PvE, I would prioritize haste slash mastery, and for PvP, I would prioritize haste slash versatility. But this is also subject to change as the game progresses, so I will link an ever-updating stat priority guide that you can come back to and see what's actually good to run. So, should you play the Restoration Druid? This comes down to if you enjoy the balancing act of playing multiple playstyles at the same time. Because that's what the Druid is. It's about adjusting on the fly as you're going to be like playing four different classes at once. It can be very fun, but also annoying when you realize you could have survived or done something with an ability that's in a certain shapeshift form that you just forgot about. So there definitely is a major learning curve. But once you get over it, the Russian Druid is one of the most powerful classes in the game, hands down. With the amount of complexity you have and flexibility with your playstyles, there is really no situation you can't deal with as this healer and because of that i would recommend it for any player looking for a rewarding challenge but that's the end of the video guys hopefully you did enjoy make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know when i upload thank you and i'll see you in the next one peace